we have a legend joining us in the booth right now, Mr. John Mayasich, former Gopher High School legend, legend on the international stage. It's an honor to have you with us, sir. As How's it feel not to be back at your old building, but watching your beloved Minnesota Golden Gophers? Well, plus the rivalry again has been, you know, reinstituted, I guess. And it's great hockey and a nice crowd. And nice to hear the uh, Minnesota Rouser again. Still does something. John, how many games are and how, you know, in tune are you with this program now? Are you able to watch a lot of games? I don't come down in the winter. I'm 200 miles north of Neville. And I'm a white knuckler in winter drivers. But I see all the games now on the Big Ten Network and the Fox. And, uh, so I see a lot of them, most of them. Yep. It's great entertainment. You said to be successful in life and on the ice, you got to have passion. Who taught you that passion? You know, I didn't know that was the answer. I just read Bobby Orr's new book, and you guys should read it. And that's what propelled him. It's passion. He had the ability, but it was passion that made him better than, you know, maybe he should have been. So I guess that's the word. When you watch this Gopher team, is there a particular player that you watch and say, gosh, I just love the way that he plays? Well, there are so many good ones that it's hard to pinpoint. I, you know, you look at goaltending, of course, and he's been fantastic all year. Uh, no, I'm impressed with with all the lines and the speed, strength, uh, uh, aggressiveness. No, they're total package. How about the state of today's game? Do you like the direction it's going? Well, I watch Bantam Pee Wee hockey up north, and you can't believe the talent these kids, 13, 14 years old. And and you know you can watch one shift and say this guy's going to make it. And uh, there are kids like that all over the country. And we fail to realize how many kids are participating. Of course, you and, also uh, the talent pool out there. You also start on the uh, Olympic stage, meddling twice as we turn around, and we can introduce you to the camera here in the booth. Also, but. Uh, you know, watching the Olympics and playing over there representing your country and having success, how special was that for you? Uh, well, it's special over there and more special when we played back in the States, as uh, our 60 team would say, and of course the 80 team at home. So it's a big advantage. But uh, uh, tomorrow morning it should be a great game with the Soviet Union. Uh, at 7 in the morning, I don't know, I'll probably see a part of it. Have a cup of coffee, uh, turn the TV on, watch the yeah, guys. I think could I, be, that'll be a great one. And I think it'll be an indication of what, you know, could happen in the rest of the tournament. I think they've got as well a chance as anybody. But uh, it, there's a home field, you know, ice advantage. But it'll, it should be great hockey. So Michigan back. The full strength of Steve Racine fights it up. You never lost a high school hockey game in four years. That must have been a pretty special experience. Well, it was expected of us. It made it tough and uh, put a lot of pressure on us to win every game. But we had loads of talent. We had, uh, you know, a little town with Brimsex and Mariucci's and Krakuses. And we had great role models. And, and uh, kids ahead of me in high school, I call them matches. So. Uh, they sort of, uh, they were the answer. That's who we wanted to emulate. Our goal was to be as good or better than they were. So it, it kind of worked out. Well, John, growing up in Bloomington and playing for the Bloomington Jefferson Jaguars, winning three state high school tournaments, I think you should know what your teams in Eveleth meant to us. We were able to win three, and you were on our minds as we were trying to win a fourth tournament to chase history and join you guys among four straight state tournaments. You know, what sort of friendships were able to make during those times? I know my friends from those teams are still some of the closest I have. Well, the, fr the, the my friends today are those that I played against, uh, Doherty and Campbell and uh, Jimmy Matson and all these high school kids, Falls and Hibbing and Grand Rapids. And so it was great to reunite with them after you for four years. And, uh, 
but you look at the skill, you know, look at the numbers today. It's, it's just amazing you know, what they can do. And it's, you know, in college, we had two lines, four defensemen, and it wasn't as physical, of course. So uh, we were able to play two or three minutes a shift. So times have changed. Wouldn't happen again. Pleasure and honor to have Mr. John Mayasich in the booth with us. And there are the numbers and the facts that back up his greatness, not just here at the University of Minnesota, but on the world stage also. You kind of like playing against Michigan in 1954. Do you remember that game? 54 was better than 51, 2, and 3. <laughs> but no, they were the powerhouse of college hockey, and uh, they had some of the best Canadian kids. And they had uh, Matt Gibson, Eichel, and um, Ronnie Martinson from Eveleth. And it's, they weren't unbeatable, but they uh, set the bar. And uh, playing against those guys made us better, and it made our program better. And that's where it is today. So the young, we have pride in that fact. The young whippersnapper behind the Michigan bench, Red Berenson, was sharing with us that back in the day, Coach Mariucci, he would be so intense, and you could hear him during the games uh, he was an intense fellow wasn't he Johnny was one of the guys he was a player you know he, he wanted to win for him he wanted to win that badly and uh, he worked us hard and he uh, a great defensive coach and a position coach and uh, and he did you know fantastic recruiting and, and Minnesota was a place the local kids wanted where they wanted to play and it was great to see him. Great to play for him. And he was our coach in the Olympics in '56, so and he did well. '56. Did you lose to the Russians? Yeah. Four were, to one. Were they like the Russians that we saw in the '70s and '80s, the high-flying attack that liked to score a crossbar down on breakaways? You know, the game I think was relatively new to them in '56. They were. As they are today, great skaters, strong, could shoot, uh, and they were great position players. They were well conditioned, and uh, you know, I don't think the score four to nothing or one indicated, you know, the difference in the quality. But uh, no, they were good. A lot of traditionalists today in hockey complain about the shootout. What do you think about the shootout? I don't like the shootout. <laughs> I. Some teams will play 60 minutes, you know, and wait for a shootout and go home with a point. I, I, it's win or lose. And I, uh, I don't know. It's my own independent feeling. I think opposing coaches wouldn't like you in a shootout either with 298 points in your <laughs> career. I think they'd be hoping for no shootout, keep you on the bench a yeah, little bit. Yeah, but those goaltenders are pretty good. And they cover the net well. Look at the equipment they've got. Mr. Mayor, such a pleasure and honor. Thanks so much for stopping by Thank the booth and sharing the stories and wisdom. We appreciate it. Great. Appreciate it.